Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this anatomy lesson, I'm gonna highlight the key differences between the female pelvis and the male pelvis. And if you were to walk into a crime scene containing skeletal remains, one of the quickest ways to determine the sex of that skeleton would be to examine the pelvis. Now let's take a look at an illustration of a male pelvis here on the left and a female pelvis here on the right to understand some of these key differences. First, you'll notice that the female pelvis is shorter and wider than the male pelvis. As a result, the iliac crest of the male pelvis rises higher than the iliac crest of the female pelvis, and there's a greater distance between the anterior superior iliac spines of the female pelvis when compared to that male pelvis. And this usually gives women a slightly curvier appearance in that hip region as compared to the average male. And the female pelvic cavity is also going to be shallower, whereas the male pelvic cavity is going to be deeper. Next, the female pelvis is going to be much lighter in weight compared to the male pelvis. And even though the female pelvis is quite a bit wider than the typical male pelvis, these bones of the female pelvis are thinner and lighter. And on the male pelvis, they're going to be a little denser and a little rougher in comparison. Next, take a look at the pubic arch, which is this notched area right underneath the pubic symphysis. And this is going to typically be much wider in women than in men. And you can remember this by thinking that when a woman gives birth to a child, she's going to have to spread her legs into a certain position, which will help facilitate the birthing process. So I just like to think of those legs spread out and that's how this pubic arch is going to be for the female. Now the angle created by this pubic arch in each pelvis is referred to as the subpubic angle. And in women, the subpubic angle will generally be equal to or greater than around 80 degrees, which is more of an obtuse angle. And if you think of a 90 degree angle, it's shaped kind of like the letter L, that's roughly what the subpubic angle is gonna be. Now in men, the pubic arch is narrower creating a subpubic angle that is usually less than or equal to about 60 or 70 degrees, which is more of an acute angle. And it's more similar to maybe an upside down V. Now these subpubic angles are not exact and they can vary from person to person. Uh, for example, I read one study that measured the subpubic angle on 109 pelvis and it found that women had a possible subpubic range of 64 to 100 degrees and men had a possible range of 48 to 81 degrees. But generally speaking, the angle in women is going to be closer to about 80 or 90 degrees, and in men it's going to be closer to about 60 or 70 degrees. Next, the female pelvis has an oval-shaped pelvic inlet, also called the pelvic brim, that is generally larger and more circular than the male inlet. And this is going to facilitate childbirth in females to help that baby pop right out. The male inlet is smaller and it's going to be more heart-shaped and a simple way to remember that the male has the more heart-shaped pelvic brim is just to remember this simple expression. The way to a man's heart is through his pelvis. As we look at the sacrum of the female in this pelvis, we'll notice that it's shorter, wider, and has a greater curve, whereas the male sacrum is going to be thinner, longer, and less curved on average. And the coccyx bone of the male curves a little more toward the front of the body in comparison to the female's coccyx bone. Next, the greater sciatic notch is going to be wider and shallower in the female pelvis as compared to the average male pelvis. Next, we have the acetabula. And if you remember back to my last video on the pelvic bones, I talked about how this is the little cup that receives the head of the femur. And these are gonna be smaller and farther apart in the females, whereas men are gonna have larger acetabula that are closer together. Next, we have the ischial tuberosities on the pelvic outlet, which are those roughened bumps. And these are gonna be farther apart, shorter, and pointed in an outward direction in the female pelvis Whereas on the male pelvis, it's gonna be sharper, longer, and they're gonna point more toward the body's midline. Now, because the male pelvis is narrower and taller, the obturator foramina, which are those huge hole areas here, have more of a rounded look. While the female pelvis, in contrast, it's gonna have more of an oval shape that kind of looks like a goose egg. Next, we have something called the ventral arc, and females are gonna usually have this on the anterior surface of the pubis, located inferiorly, 
which is not going to be typically found on the male pelvis. Another difference is the subpubic concavity. And this is just a little notched area along the medial edge of the ischiopubic ramus. And this is going to be more pronounced in females, especially after the onset of puberty as compared to the male pelvis. And then finally, you have the medial aspect of the ischiopubic ramus. And again, medial is a directional term, means toward the body's midline. And here, what you're going to find is that the ramus comes to more of a pointed edge in females, while in males, it's going to be more of a rounded edge. Okay, that wraps up this video over the key differences between the male and female pelvis. And we have a free quiz that you can take on our website to test your knowledge over this material. In addition, we have a whole playlist of anatomy videos you might want to check out if you're studying this topic in school. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe.